There's plenty of times something had great potential before someone came along and ruined it all. Much like me joining what culture, there's plenty of cases of just terrible, wooden, detestable people coming and f***ing things up for the rest of the people by being a bitch shit. Sorry everyone, I promise I'm trying. These are the movies that suffered that fate, where they had original ideas and wonderful prospects before an actor came along and just delivered a drippy performance. With much better casting, these could have been the films that really made it out there, but instead, we're left with What If. With that in mind, I'm Ash from What Culture, and these are six times terrible acting ruined potentially great movies. Six. Beauty and the Beast. Disney's live action adaptation of their classic animated film had almost everything going for it, from Alex Menken's original music, to an ensemble cast, to incredible production design, and Emma Watson. Now usually that would be a name that incites smiles and magic and Harry Potter themed things, but this time, not so much. Though the former child star might have seemed like a perfect choice for Belle physically, she really did look the part, it sadly wasn't so much the same thing for her singing, which was not really trusted by the studio and ended up auto-tuned to heck. Unfortunately, this means that it sticks out like a sore thumb, and although Emma Watson is an excellent actor and the Beauty and the Beast adaptation is alright, it would have been much better being able to hear her voice properly rather than be distracted by the chipmunk vocals. Number 5. The Godfather Part 3 Nobody that I know at least is going to argue that The Godfather 3 is as good as its predecessors, but it is so vilified among the fan base that it's pretty much underrated at this point. Writer-director Francis Ford Coppola famously cast his daughter as Mary when Winona Ryder dropped out last minute, and it's painfully apparent throughout. She can't really muster that palpable romantic chemistry with Andy Garcia despite him trying, and her climactic death that's supposed to be one of the emotional cornerstones of the movie is incredibly stagey. Coppola insists that nepotism didn't dictate him casting his daughter, but it's an accusation that has followed him throughout both of their careers. One suspects that had an actress who was prioritising it as their career, or maybe it had a bit more practice than Sophia had got involved with the movie, then there wouldn't be nearly as much vitriol towards it as there is now. Number 4. The 1517 to Paris Clint Eastwood once again made the ill-advised choice to hire authentic actors for this movie, which combined with his speedy shooting style, made some calamitous results. The 1517 to Paris is a dramatisation of a 2015 train attack which was averted by three American men, Spencer Stone, Anthony Sadler and Alex Galatos. Eastwood was so concerned with pulling off a gimmicky experiment, he didn't really think about how much more affecting the film would be had professional actors done the legwork. He got so caught up in whether he could, he forgot to ask whether he should. Number 3. Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets Luc Besson's quirky space opera is one of the most underrated films of last year, and yes, you can fight me about that. But Dane DeHaan's central performance is one of the things that was off-putting enough to get many people with their knives out for it. In the comics, Valerian was a square-jawed rogue, but DeHaan lacks the conventional handsomeness and the persuasive arrogance of the character to make it quite work. He's far more comfortable playing wiry weirdos, and his attempt at being a suave badass complete with cheesy dramatic whisper doesn't really suit the character as much as he thinks it does. It doesn't help that his romantic chemistry with Cara Delvine isn't particularly there, and considering how stylish and beautiful the movie is and how much potential it had to be amazing, it's a bit of a disappointment. Number 2. Snow White and the Huntsman 2012 Snow White and the Huntsman tried to give the classic fairy tale the Dark Knight treatment, but with a one-note performance from Kristen Stewart, it didn't really hit the mark. Has nobody seen Twilight? What do they expect? Cynically cast as the titular character due to her box office appeal, Stuart may be a really talented actor when it comes to indie fare, but big, tentpole blockbusters that require lots of charisma? Not so much. Kristen Stewart basically chose one facial expression for the whole movie and stuck with it, which I guess that makes acting easier, but it doesn't. it doesn't do anything. It didn't help. Chris Hemsworth doesn't get away scot-free either due to his wonky Scottish accent, but both pale in comparison to the incredible evil queen in Charlize Theron. She was just very good and very Charlize Theron. I don't know what else to say about that. Come on guys, up your game. Number 1. Spider-Man 3 Spider-Man 3 remains one of the most hotly anticipated superhero sequels of all time, which made it even more painful when they bungled up Spidey's battle against fan favourite Venom. Topher Grace was woefully miscast as Eddie Brock, who in the comics was a confident and physically imposing adversary to Peter Parker, but instead we got 
Eric Foreman from That 70s Show. Sad to say as it is, Grace is fundamentally the wrong character to play Brock, with the symbiote peeling back and revealing his cute little non-threatening face becoming borderline laughable. He makes Venom less a ferocious monster and more an annoying douchebag. Let's not forget that Maguire gave the worst performance of the entire series in this film as well, and Kirsten Dunst is left to flail with not much to do, as well as James Franco giving the most cringeworthy moment whilst eating a pie. It's fair to say that the writing wasn't good, but the acting definitely could have been stepped up just, just a little bit. Not that I could do any better, but just a little bit, guys. And that's our list. What's the worst case of the Wizows you've ever seen? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and please come back for more. Thanks for watching.